screw the rich, screw gender roles, screw definitive endings. This is exactly what I got from watching Triangle of Sadness and I really enjoyed my experience. It was such a great time because it was totally the opposite of what I was expecting. What's up everybody? My name is Jen and you're watching The Screening Lady. In this video, we're gonna talk about Triangle of Sadness and I'm very excited to talk about it because one, I finally found a theater to see it while I still could. Um, if you're from Manila like me, I'm gonna talk about the cinema later but we're gonna talk about the movie first and it, this, this is probably my top 3 of 2022 films. Um, I gotta say though, like right off the bat, because I'm Filipino, there is a lot of hype with Dali de Leon and the movie in general. So when I watched it, it definitely met my expectations, even exceeded it really, because I was completely expecting the opposite. Back in December 2022, when it started to be released in our shores, I think the title, if there is anything I will complain about, it's the title. It definitely undersold what the movie was about. So I was, for the most part, kind of putting it my in my last priority. Because I thought it was going to be like poverty porn or high drama energy. And I've never been so happy for being so wrong. Because now that I finally had the time, I was enjoying, again, like I said, my whole experience. So, Triangle of Sadness, three different sides. We're starting off with three different parts or acts. And um, I love how it's just each of these segments are bluntly showing us awkward situations that are blow blown out of proportion because it's done also in the most subtlest way, right? Like whether the camera is lingering or the silence of an awkward situation or awkward conversation is too long. Down to you physically, I physically, I could not turn away from some of the things also because like there is human waste on every corner of the screen so i mean that's ruben osland right like he gives it to you unapologetically and you cannot get away from it here watch more commentary about society and i really loved it basically um for the first part we are it, it's sort of like a cold open to the modeling industry but it kind of for me it it calls back also to its you know whether it's commercialism or capitalism it's h&m yay <laughs> And I love how like we are given the catwalk or the runway and you're just it's just forcing tone deaf political causes or environmental causes. And I was just already snickering like first five, six minutes of the film. Um we are introduced Carl and Yaya and a ten minute discussion on who takes care of the bill. That it's not about money but it should be. Um Carl was making really great points for me. <laughs> but so you know, that's the first part of of the movie and it definitely gave us the teaser of what to expect. Things are going to be awkward, things are going to be funny and, and we're definitely be we're definitely going to be in a ride for two and a half hours, right? So after the first part, uh, we move to the yacht or the cruise where Yaya got the, what is it, like free tickets from, from being an influencer. So we get to see the rest of the cast. I feel like they were different moving parts of one machine and I liked how everyone just worked together. Whether it was the chemistry or down to the dialogues, even to the placements, how everyone was just, you know, the blockings and all that. I really loved, I really loved this part of the film. And this is, of course, where we meet. I think the crowd favorite, of course, would have to be the Russian dude who sells shit. But for me, personally, another couple who stood out for me was the... Was it this old British couple who... What did they... They spread democracy. They were responsible for spreading democracy to the world. And how they died also was like, Oh, is this grenade from us? Um, I just... I had a really great time there. Um, this whole part also, I feel like it was satanic on drugs or Downton Abbey on drugs. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. If there was a third level to, to the service and all of that, and we find the Filipino crew at the bottom of whatever scenario I'm, I was talking about. I liked in particular how they were playing metal while the Filipino crew was was um, cleaning. And we did sort of see a teaser of Dali for a bit. And we definitely saw more of her by the third act. Um, 
in this I don't know why, I, you know, I see a group of unstructured people that I immediately think Lord of the Flies. But it's really more of, um, I want to say, and I got this from my friend also, where at the start of the film, we were immediately explained to what Triangle of Sadness is. It's obviously this part of the face, but the whole Triangle of Sadness talking about here was the triangle, the socioeconomic status also. We call it Tatsulok, where I'm from. And basically, this is where all of the character development sort of, or character arcs, arcs sort of pivot and change. And now we see Dolly, um, Abigail, the, Dolly's character at the top of the food chain. And we see all these, what is it, like one percenters at the bottom of the triangle. I love how right before we get to the island, the most pivotal part of the story is when these privileged people are deciding on mundane things like whether it's it's setting the captain's dinner on a thursday when mom paula said it shouldn't be on a thursday down to this um what is it this old lady who decided to be the savior of the crew that day and say everyone should go down the water slide like once i mean it told us how these guys when they make decisions it's kind of it kind of waterfalls down to us plebeians and look what happens. Um, shit, shit happens. Shit actually hit the fan. It hit the ceiling. It hit hit the floor, the walls, the paintings, everything basically. And I'm not gonna go into the whole. Um, I read it was like an 18 minute sequence of nothing but projectile things. Um, it was overly disgusting, but it was somehow poetic and whatever it meant. Whether it was stupid or deep, I loved every minute of it. I couldn't watch everything, but I was just loving every minute of it. And uh, yeah, so that's what happens, basically. So we see our group of survivors in the island. We see the triangle happen. And this time, whoever was on top was now on the bottom, bottom now on top. And look what happened to someone like Mam Paula. I'm saying Mam Paula because that's how Dolly says it, right? Um... Everyone changed except for her. She's still in the middle ground, I would think. But Dolly, now having this role, kind of, for me, it's just showing also how, I want to say, I don't know why absolute power corrupts absolutely. I don't know why it's coming in my head. But I want to say that it doesn't matter who is on top. The power gets you. And Dolly here, in this scenario, her currency is fish. Her currency is fish. Um, fire her currency is is all the supplies in the lifeboat right and because of that now she gets to be the captain now she gets to have her concubine and now she gets sort of like the change in her character this is really bad this is really really bad even carl had that pivot where now she's actually taking the role uh, if we would say the feminine, the female role of being the concubine, that's what Carl is now. And subtly also, I like how Yaya's character changed to when she was telling to herself um, earlier in the movie, right? How she, all she has are the looks and we see it kind of deteriorate because she's, I, I feel like it's a reaction to the sun also or to the heat. But she was contributing more, I would think, to the... To this little society in the island right so everyone had their change um i could not there were a couple of scenes where i could not bear to look at what was happening also but everyone got that um even in the vulcan i think um, it was a really really great cast i was loving every one of them which brings us to the question of how exactly did the film end for you i'd love to know how it ended for you for me in particular, I have a very pessimistic view in life, so it it wasn't happy for any one of them. I feel like Dolly or Abigail's character had more to lose if they left the island, and she wouldn't have it. There is nothing to go back for her, I, I, I feel like, and um, she wanted to keep it that way. Plus, I don't know how stable their mental health was, all of them, so I think it would have happened such that you know with carl running towards the i love how the movie is also structured because um we never really thought it would go that far 
I kind of actually thought Yaya was gonna push Abigail over the cliff, but she never did that. And uh, I mean, I never really knew Dolly could do it. I mean, Abigail could do it. I just keep going back and forth, right? Until the last moment. And then with Carl running like for what, a minute or two, we were hoping, well, m myself in particular, I was hoping that, okay, she he was running to go to, you didn't know why, she, why he was running until it cuts to black. And then I realized, fuck, okay, now I gotta make my own ending. And I never like making my own endings because they always they're always like sad or bad or whatever. But that's part of the experience, right? I'm glad to be seeing a movie like this again. It's not a franchise. No one, not one of them, is a known actor except for Carl himself. I think he's very familiar. But it, we see independent films again, and it's shown in independent theaters. If you're from Manila like me, I saw it in Cinema 76. It's uh, The new place now is in Tomas Murato. If it's okay with you, it's a 50 to 60 seater theater, but there is a cafe. You can bring the um, drinks, whether it's coffee or, or alcohol, you can bring it in the theaters, and there's a bunch of other food. You can eat dinner in, and I had a really great time with the community of, of other cinema goers because. You know, it's really infectious when you're laughing together at all the awkward moments, at all the Pinoy moments also. And at the same time, it's just, you know, it's just when we're gasping in unison, it just, it's really great to be back. Um, if you're still watching me here up until this point, thank you. And if it's, if I can bother you any further, a like and a subscribe would really help me out continue with this channel. Um, obviously, I had a really great time. Please, please watch it if you still can. And I hope everyone else gets to see this in a streaming service too because I am really looking forward to a lot of reactions in this movie. So that's it for now, you guys. Thanks for spending time with me and I hope I'll see you next time in any one of my videos. Bye!